everybody, and welcome to an episode of the This Old Night podcast. I am your host, Nina, otherwise known as Ine, on all of the social medias, and you can find show notes for this episode and multiple previous episodes um, in the corresponding down bar of the, uh, the episode in YouTube. Um, I have been posting some notes on Ravelry, but my group is really not that active. Um, I still go on there to access my pattern library and to communicate with people, um, but is not my primary mode of doing things. So um, any cows I'm running, I'm trying to do uh, through Instagram for right now, but I am still going to pull winners from um, the thread on the Ravelry group as well for the long-term make-along. There aren't that many entries. I don't know if anybody's really using the hashtag either. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, with that said, I did just send out final prizes for the uh, Stasher Shelf Challenge from last year. My apologies. Thank you all for being very patient with me while I got those out. I had international winners, um, so it just, Every Saturday it felt like there was something happening and um, for international I have to fill out customs forms and then um, you know I take the packages in my post office is only open till noon so just you know do the math sometimes it just doesn't happen uh, but yeah the prizes are on their way so hopefully they will get to people soon um, so yeah the family is at the lake, so I thought I would take this opportunity to record a podcast because it has been an age. In fact, I already have another episode on my phone, and because my kids are using my computer over the summer, um, there isn't like a big normal window of time where it's available for me to use. Um, all that to say, I haven't had time to put the footage onto my computer and edit it. So you may get a double dose of me <laughs> for what that's worth. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to come on and share some things because I have some stuff kind of sitting here in a pile. Um, a couple weeks ago, I took some time to clean up my office, which is the room we're in right now. Uh, and it, it was nice to have things organized. So I don't like that there's another pile here again on the floor. I want to get it put away, but I don't want to do that until I share things with you. So this one may be a little bit more heavy of an acquisitions episode than normal. And that's really because I haven't podcast in a month or a month and a half. Um, so it's been a while. So anyway, yeah, let's just get right into it. So I don't have any FOs on the podcast that's still on my phone. I finished my stripes sweater by Andrea Mowry. It was all different here on my own, sorry. All different colorways of uh, Marie Cutie Bakes from Flies and Hellhounds. Um, they were all kind of Six of Crows themed um, colors. I really love how it turned out. I mean, I have all of the moody fall sweaters and I love it. Um, but today I'm wearing an oldie but goodie. This is my Vintage 83 by Andrea Mowry, knit out of um, Knit Fix Risada, which is a discontinued yarn. Um, I say it every time, I'll say it again. Knit Fix, please, please, please bring this back. And if you see it in a stash, snatch it up because it is really good. It's a good summer yarn. It's um, cotton with like a slight amount of elastic and some wool. Um, and it's really nice for a summer knit. So like it was 80 degrees outside. I was wearing this. I wasn't too hot. It was amazing. Um, yeah. So knits that I'm working on. I went on a bit of a cast on spree. I had finished up the Ginny cardigan and the striped sweater. And I wanted to have some sweaters on my needles. Um, I like to be able to just kind of pick them up and knit stockinette while I'm uh, reading books. So I wanted to get a lot of sweaters on the needles so I could kind of switch it up. 
um, but still be able to have kind of a mindless thing to pick up and grab and work on. So I uh, cast on, I think, three sweaters and then uh, Samantha Guerin of Samantha Guerin Designs posted on Instagram that she was looking for test knitters for a Hello Work Yoke pullover in worsted weight yarn and I was like, yes, sign me up please um, because it is beautiful. So it is the Wild Joy sweater and I dropped all those cast ons like hot potatoes and started knitting on that. So here it is. <laughs> um, I did not have this cast on last time I podcast. This has all been since then. This is not so variegated in person. It looks ridiculous. Like there's all of this craziness, but um, it's very subtle. I don't know why the camera picks it up as though it's like these very, very pronounced stripes. That is not what it looks like in real life. Um, the main color of the sweater that I used is Dream in Color Classy in the Gothic Rose colorway. This was maybe my second or third um, sweater quantity that I ever purchased. Um, so I've had this in my stash since 2008. Um, I bought it before I had Megwin if that gives you any idea of how long it's been in my stash. So I love that I was able to uh, pair it up with some things and get it out of my stash. It's gonna be amazing in the sweater once it's done. It's really warm. Like when I put it on to try it on, it was so warm that I had to very quickly take it off. Let's go to this side. Yeah, so it's a deep cranberry color. It's a little better when I come closer. It's not, it's just not those crazy stripes that you were seeing. But if I come back here, it looks like, oh, it's these ridiculous stripes. And I do think it will probably bleed a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna have to wash it with some color catchers to not get on the other yarns. So my contrast yarns that I'm using, this one is two uh, yarns held together. This is leftovers from some of my um, mittens that I did, um, I made Bunden mittens by Skin Your Knits. Um, it's held double with uh, fig lace from Plies and Hellhounds in the England Times color way. Um, and then I had some uh, the, the spin cycle in the rusted rainbow that a friend sent to me that was leftovers from one of her projects. I I think I used maybe a third of a skein. It wasn't even very much. So it's kind of a fun way if someone um, that you know used Spin Cycle and you just want a little bit, you could probably use their leftovers and be like, hey, do you have any leftover? Would you like to share it with me? Or maybe you can go in with a couple of friends on getting a skein because I know skeins of Spin Cycle are kind of pricey. They're like $35, I think. So, um, Given the yardage, that's probably a little bit high of a price point, but if you used it in like a color work sweater and maybe split it with two other friends, uh, then you're only talking about $10 a piece and you get some fun kind of different color work. It's just an idea. And then the uh, other color is Lang Yawul, I think, in a black tweed. So it's a little bit more low contrast, but I really love the low contrast. I am here for it. And there's a piece up there as well. Um, I think because of the way that I picked different weights, like this ended up being quite thick, probably closer to an Aran weight. And then the Spin Cycle Dream State I would call it a DK. It says it's a worsted, but I would call it more of a DK. So it's almost a little bit thin in places. But anyway, long story short, my yoke depth is actually longer than um, what the pattern calls for. It calls for this to be, I think, nine inches and mine is 10. It's totally fine. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a bat wing but uh, that's okay. It's supposed to be a cozy sweater, so I don't mind it being a little bit looser in the armpit area. Um, 
anything else. So yeah, I, I'm weighing everything. So I am still recording that on my Ravelry project page because um, she's got a group there for putting in like all of your comments and stuff. But she's been great about if people can't access Ravelry, like she'll still um, converse and, and pick testers that can't access Ravelry and just do it through email. So she's putting it in both places, which is um, awesome as far as inclusiveness. So, um, yeah, Wild Joy sweater, I finished the body, I'm going to cast on for the arms hopefully this evening, and um, maybe by this weekend I will have this done because it's worsted weight so it knits up so freaking fast. I think I started this a week ago, maybe? Um, and I'm almost done. So I, the only thing I modified so far is I added waist shaping and I maybe waist shaped a little too much. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um, so all I did was I did every 10 rows, um, I did four decreases and then I immediately increased back out. So it fits, it just fits very well. So if I wanted this to be a little bit more of a floofy, oversized, comfy sweater, this isn't it. Um, I did not make that. I made a fancy sweater, which is fine. I need fancy sweaters too. I think those are a little bit more dressy for work. Um, and this would definitely be a really nice dressy one for work um, when it starts to get really cold. I do think I might do the neckline first. So that then when I'm done with the sleeves, I'm just done. Um, plus I already have my uh, size six needle tips on my cable and that's what I would do for this. So I used size six for the ribbing and size eight for the rest of the sweater. Um, I do think it will grow a little bit with blocking though because my swatch did grow. It's super wash, at least this is super wash. Um, not all of my colorways in my yoke are super wash, but the uh, the main body of the sweater is in super wash. So I do think it will grow um, both in length and in width. So it'll probably be fine. Once it blocks, it's going to loosen up and then it won't be too tight. But anyway, that is my Wild Joy sweater and I adore it. Okay. Um, the next one has also been on my to knit list for a long time. Um, it is a pattern by Jessie Maid Designs, and um, I think she's Jessie May on Instagram. Um, she does a lot of just like really basic, gorgeous silhouettes. Um, they're typically cropped, but obviously you can lengthen them and make them fit you. So I'm going to do this one as a full length sweater, and. Um, it is mohair and fingering weight held double. I'm using a Knit Picks mohair, so it's very affordable. Um, it is the Knit Picks Fall Grace. Aloft. It's this one. Knit Picks Aloft lace weight. And this colorway is London. The London hand paint, so it's the Aloft hand paints. They also just have a plain old Aloft that's not kind of um, tonal. But this is a tonal navy blue, black, and like a charcoal gray. Um, and I am holding it double with some Plies and Hellhounds in the Sea Captain's Widow colorway. It is sparkly. So good. Um, and the little sparkles kind of come through more softly with um, the mohair. So it kind of looks like a starry night. But I am absolutely thinking of this as my Ice Planet Barbarians sweater because yes, Gabby got me into reading the Ice Planet Barbarians series and I'm not sorry. So for those of you who don't know about it, it is a series by uh, Ruby Dixon. It's a romance series that is like alien sci-fi and has not a bad um, plot. 
there's quite a lot of like canon there and um there's just a lot of things and it's over the top and ridiculous and so good um so right now i'm reading like a spin-off series that's ice home um i just read the second book yes i've just read the second book um, so it's kind of a concurrent timeline with where I am in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. But if you like romance novels and you like sci-fi, I highly recommend. Um, but it's definitely adult content. So, you know, there's going to be some more um, descriptive scenes. But um, there's not anything bad other than the first book. Like there's it's not bad like there's all consent and consenting adults let's just go with that so anyway <laughs> so it is the uh the very v-neck raglan by jesse made so you can see there's my v-neck um but i'm gonna keep this one a little bit loosey-goosey and oversized i'm just gonna do two decreases below the bust line bring it in a little smidgy inch. That's not very much though. Um, and then I'm just going to work straight down. I am going to make this long because I'm kind of imagining it with either a long pencil skirt or leggings. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I've got in my brain right now. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, definitely going to make it long length. The sleeves are actually knit full length even on the cropped one with a little bit of a bell sleeve on the end. Um, I'm undecided yet on if I want to do that or not. I kind of like cuffs. I kind of like it being kind of covering up to here and being cozy. Um, so I'm, I'm probably going to do uh, ribbing. But yeah, that's where that is. It is amazing to work on. These two yarns together are everything. I love it. I'm alternating skeins for both colors and I don't think I really have any pooling. But it's like really navy blue. Like there's not that much contrast. Again like I'm facing the sun and my camera is picking up a lot more contrast. Um, but it's very like dark navy with black um, in person. So good. So as I said, moody fall sweaters. Okay. Then um, I'm also knitting another short sleeve circular yoke sweater. Um, this is the Minty Tee by uh, Bigger Than Life Knits. It's my first time ever knitting one of her designs and I really, really like it. So again, I separated for the sleeves on this one. And I think when I'm done with this one, um, I'm gonna cast one on for Meglin in the smallest size. Cause it's just a really cute summer top. Um, Meglin already has her colors picked out. It's gonna be like a kind of bright lavender with yellow stripes. And then she wanted to have a little pop of, um, what is it, like bright pink on the, uh, the collar, so. That's what we're gonna do but yep so now I'm just cruising down the body I'm using um, cool cotton by Brett C. Cole I think again really really old sweater quantity this one um, my mom bought it to make baby stuff for Megwin and um, I made her a baby sweater out of the gray. This is not white. It's actually a very, very pale gray. Um, so I have just enough to do the contrast stripes on this sweater and then the spearmint I just never did anything with. I would say my mom never did anything with it and then she gave it to me because she realized she would not never do anything with it. So um, yeah, I found this pattern. It was a perfect yardage to use pretty much everything. I think I'll have maybe two skeins of it left, but it's a, um, a cotton acrylic blend. So it's going to be really nice um, summer top. And then... Boop -a -doop -a -doop. 
I also cast on a long term in my queue thing. This is my Comfort Fade Cardi by Adrian Lowry. Um, so after finishing my Ginny cardigan, I was absolutely in love with the silhouette of the shawl color belted cardigan. I wanted another one. Um, I bought this yarn years ago when um, Jinx Yarns was going out of business. Well, I bought what I thought was enough when she was still in business. And then she announced she was going out of business and I got some safety stock just in case I didn't have enough for the sweater. So um, it is a reverse stockinette faded cardigan. Um, so my colors are uh, Never Ender, uh, Land of Glaze, <laughs> um, Part of Your World. Is that this one? Yeah, Part of Your World. And then the cake is a lie. That's this one. Which is a portal reference. Um, and then the shawl collar cardigan does like the opposite. So it would start with the purple and fade out to the gray. So it'll end up that the gray on the top at the collar will be right next to the purple. Which I think will be really nice because it has that dark purple in it. So they all kind of have that purple. That's why I chose that for the top. So this will be a fun um, cardigan, really comfy and cozy. Wearing a belted shawl collar cardigan is kind of my uniform at home. Um, I just really like that for kind of cinching it up on you and keeping you warm going around the house with just a t-shirt and yoga pants so that is that and then the last thing I have on my needles is the Fiona sweater and I did do a little bit of work on this so um, sorry I don't have the pattern so I don't know the designer but I'll make sure I link it in the down bar uh, so this is the Fiona sweater um, I'm knitting it out of um, fig lace held double with the Isaac base um, from Plies and Hellhounds. This is the Fireheart colorway and this is her Buzzard colorway. Um, it is almost all over brioche, so it's a circular yoke pattern. This is two color brioche. So you can see Fireheart and Buzzard together there. And then um, it's one color brioche for the rest of the body. Um, so that's gonna be all in Buzzard. And then same on the sleeves. Um, so obviously that's a lot of brioche <laughs> and it takes a long time to get anywhere. So this is really just my picking it up and kind of working on it when I feel like it sweater because um, you don't make a lot of progress. I'm sorry, I'm showing you back. This is the front. But it's very satisfying knitting brioche and when I want to knit brioche in the round this is the pattern I pick up. And it's just easy peasy all the way down forever and ever and ever and ever until it gets as long as I want it to be. And then that's done. It is in a bag that I won from Selma of the Little Big Knits podcast for one of her giveaways. So, see, I'm using it, Selma. I think it's a bag by Awesome Granny bag. Yes, it's a bag by Awesome Granny bag. So, super cute little sheepies. That is all of my whips. Before I move on to acquisitions, I'm going to pause and check something. Okay, I was also able to move some things. So I have my fan going here. Hopefully that's not going to end up being super loud when I go back to try to edit this podcast. And now it looks like I've got a uh, Minecraft wither growing out of my head. But what are you gonna do? 
Um, yeah, so let's move on to acquisitions. So in terms of acquisitions, I have a little bit of artwork, some patterns, and um, my Plies and Pages book, box, book, book box from um, Plies and Hellhounds that came. So um, starting with the artwork, uh, I got some different art prints and I finally got my poster set. Here on my eye, an Ada hair. It's fun. Um, yeah. So I finally got my poster set for my Avatar uh, covers from the A Touch of Magic Designs Etsy shop. And in the interim period, uh, because the poster sets took a while, I think they had some like printing or shipping delays. Etsy actually shut their um, store down. They said, well, you're taking too long, like you didn't print labels, so you are violating your terms. Um, and they shut their store down, which really sucks. Like they were very communicative with everyone who had pre-ordered it. Um, they were sending out emails constantly with what was going on and when to expect it, but they had to like set up uh, regular website like a commerce website overnight because they were losing money because they were shut down so i went and bought some prints from them in their launch of their new website because like that was terrible of etsy and etsy kind of sucks with what they do to small um artist business um so i wanted to support them so they had a couple of prints from um, the Illumini series, and I think I've shared on the podcast before, this series blew me away, like absolutely blew me away. It is, um, the authors are Kaufman and Kristoff, but I think it's Amy Kaufman and Justin Kristoff, but don't quote me on that. Um, but it's Illumini, Gemina, and Obsidio. It's a trilogy. And uh, it is sci-fi, and it's just written in a really, really interesting, different format. I've never seen anything like it, and it just made such a huge impression on me. I loved those three books. I also loved the um, All the Stars and Teeth. Hey everybody, small correction. I talk about a series that starts with All the Stars and Teeth. That's a different book. I haven't read it yet. It's on my to read list. The series I was talking about is the Starbound Trilogy by Amy Kaufman. It starts with These Broken Stars, and the next one is This Shattered World, and the last one is Their Fractured Light. They are all amazing books. I highly recommend them. I love Amy Kaufman, and um, everything I've read by her so far has been great. I don't remember what the series was called, but the first book is All the Stars and Deep by Amy Kaufman. It was amazing, like beautifully written, lots of just like poetic ways of expressing humanity and exploring the ideas of humanity and love and what makes us unique. Um, yeah, just really good. I love her, um, her writing style. So two prints that I got, um, so this is the first one. This one is called, I think, Astro Princess. And it is one of the characters, Katie Grant, in um, the Illumini Files. And then she has Aiden, who is an AI. And then this one is uh, Katie Grant and Ezra Mason. And this one is from the uh, Obsidio book, which is like the last book in the series. So just really cute and I like them. Um, I still need to buy my own copies. I, I borrowed them from the library but that's one series that I definitely would like to own um, and I will read again. Alright, so let's go on to the, uh, the covers. Of course the stack is ridiculous because these books are ridiculous. Sarah J. Moss. And the Tonker. Okay. So, I don't know 
know about you, but I am not a fan of cover art changes mid-series. And there was a hard one that happened with Akatar. Um, I think it was starting after A Court of Frost and Starlight. They redid all the covers, and I had the older version of the covers. Um, so my cover art didn't match, and like the new cover art's kind of ugly. Um, so when A Touch of Magic Designs announced that they were going to um, partner with an artist to do a poster set, poster set that would fit on books, I was like, yes, please, sign me up. Here they are. So this one is A Court of Thorns and Roses. So we've got Feyre there. Shiny. Got my spiny. And we've got Tim Tam the Jerk Man on the back. Sorry spoilers if you haven't read it. I am not Team Tamlin. No redemption arc. No. No. Jerk face? No. Doesn't get redemption arc. No. Alright. A Court of Mist and Fury. Here we've got delicious Feyre and Rhysand. And Feyre has freckles! What? I love her tattoo. So good. And on the back we have Valaris. A Court of Wings and Ruin. I've recently started listening to the Heaving Bosoms podcast. Um, I caught up on their Echo War series, and now all I can think is those stupid sisters and hot dummies. <laughs> so anyway, there's the stupid sisters <laughs> and the court of hot dummies. <laughs> so the Bat Boys. And then on the inside, we've got the cauldron or the tired bathtub. And the very, very sad wing, the broken, bleeding wing of Cassian. Then we've got the Christmas special, A Quarter Frost and Starlight, which really is just favorite painting, Christmas shopping, and there's the beast she sees in the Ouroboros. And the last one, A Court of Silver Flames with Nesta and Cassian. So we've got the mountain. So good. All right, so that's all my art. Um, and now my covers are beautiful. They're amazing. And I don't want to put them on my shelf because I want to enjoy them. So I might just put them on my shelf and like trade off which one is facing out um, so I can enjoy my art. I got some sewing patterns. So cashmerette, I didn't even realize this. They were having um, their annual buy to get one free sale. I just had a cart because I wanted to make some wrap shirts and wrap dresses. Um, I've had this blue velvet stretch material for a while and I've wanted to make a wrap dress. And a couple of people recommended the Appleton dress um, the nice thing about cashmere patterns is they are drafted for um, cup sizes C through H. And then they also have modifications on their website for, no, I'm sorry, the other sizing. Um, so they have like 12 to 32 or 0 to 16. Um, the other sizing goes up to a much higher cup. Size. But this goes for cups C through H. I got the 0 to 16 size. I do wear like a 14 in their patterns, um, but I don't have to do a large bust adjustment. So if you didn't know, most commercial sewing patterns are based on a, an average um, B cup. So if you sew and um, you have a larger bust or larger than a B cup, it's going to just enlarge everything to account for your bust size being larger and just because you have big boobs doesn't mean that you have gigantic shoulders and a gigantic neck opening that you need so things 
boots don't always fit. Um, the other thing that they do is that like people who have larger busts tend to have more forward shoulders and um, be shorter waisted. So they already kind of build that into their patterns, which is great. Um, so I got the Appleton dress, which is just a basic wrap dress and it also gives mods so that it doesn't gape open because um, that's the problem with wrap dresses is that over the day this goes down and it starts opening up so um, they give you um, modifications to add like a strip of fabric to make that not happen um, so yeah Appleton dress and then I got the Dartmouth top which is basically a wrap top without the tie so you can see it there. It's long sleeve or short sleeve. I think it's a bow wrap. Yeah, I mean, it's a crossover jersey top. So you can have the fixed or a ruche front, which would be like it kind of has gathers around the waist. And then the last one I got is the Harrison shirt. So this one is a, you know, standard dress top but the cool thing is it's got all of these seams to help it fit better be fitted for your bust because um when i, I don't know about others but when i wear like standard button-up dress shirts they look pretty terrible because they're just like hanging off <laughs> so hey, Mom, those are the three you. i got miss you too buddy don't don't climb, don't climb, don't climb. What does don't climb mean? You just kept going. You smell like a little. <clears throat> Hi guys! I was at the beach. You were. I'm very, very cold. I do feel cold, little little hands. <clears throat> can I have an ice cream cone? No. No. You can save it for after dinner. Can I have you know what you can do? You can have that and take it. No, because then I don't want to say no later. Can you take this out to the kitchen for me, please? Thank you. Okay. And last but not least, my Flies and Pages book from Flies and Hellhound. So um, it was themed on this book. It was based on this book, which I did pick up a copy of. I read it from the library, but I probably will read it again um, sometime later this year. It is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. It is a romance novel, um, and it's super cute. Like, super, super cute. I love, love, love Alex and Henry's relationship, how it develops, the friendships that are in this book. It is just so good. Um, so anyway, yeah, when she announced it, I was like, yes, please. Um, also, it's on sale at Books A Million as part of their summer sale, like their summer romance sale. So what came in my book box? Um, there were a couple of prints, like art prints from Peaches, obviously. And then there's also a cute little postcard, which my friend Hannah and I have been exchanging um, letters and stuff so Megwin can practice her cursive. And I've just been enjoying writing letters. So there are two art prints in here. There's Henry and Alex. So cute. I love that. That was the first thing. And then there was tea, which I have not drunk any of. I've been really good. I waited till I could share with you. Um, so the tea is from His Royal Heretic, or it's called His Royal Heretic Tea from Hufflepuff 
Huffle Pop Shop on Etsy. And it's a rooibos tea, orange chocolate, biscotti rooibos. And it smells so good. So good. I'm really I'm ready to drink this tea now. <laughs> All right, so there's that. I just figured out today that, like a dummy, there's a sock pattern on the back of this, or a, a QRA code for um, a sock pattern from Sock Witchery. Um, and I follow her on Instagram. It's super cute. So it uses the two colorways that were in the box. So these are obviously dyed by Gabby. So there is Dear Fizby and love pyramus because a lot of the book is like correspondence back and forth between these two both texts and emails um and there's just a lot of like beautiful love letters in it and they do a lot of referring to historical uh same-sex couples throughout time um and it's just super <laughs> can I thank you anymore it's adorable and lovable and wonderful and beautiful love it so much so anyway this sock pattern kind of alternates these two colors one of them being the main color and then on the other sock one of the main color is the other one um it's really pretty Gabby posted it on her book box reveal and I was like oh I didn't even realize there was a sock pattern that went with it so my bad uh, yeah. So those are the two colorways. I think she's going to have these in a shop update this weekend. So if you are interested in either one of them, she'll have like a limited amount of skeins in the update this weekend. So you can get them without having gotten the box. And then the last thing that was in here was this delicious candle. And it says, history, huh? Bet we could make some. Which is a quote from the book. Um, and this is from Books, Tabs, and Wicks. I think she's on Etsy. I put that, put the card down. Okay. No, it's Books, Tabs, and Wicks.com. So this uh, scent, it, it says Baking with Your Boyfriend, The Prince of Wales. Um, so it is a cake smell. Just says history, huh? But it's a really good smell. Really good. It's a cakey smell. But, um, yeah, in the book, Henry reveals that he loves watching the Great British Baking Show, and that's kind of like his escape television and I can relate because I love it too it is just so darn adorable and soothing and it makes me feel like I can make a million things I have made some of the things from it and yeah I just love it it's just wholesome it's so good so anyway that is the flies and pages book from this time um, she did announce the, her next one on her Instagram. It's The Vine Witch. I haven't read that book yet. And now I suppose I have to read it because if it was good enough for her to make a book box out of, it's probably pretty freaking good. So anyway, gonna be next on my to read list once I, once I tunnel out of the Ruby Dixon um, vortex that I found myself in. Um, I did recently read a book, The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. It was so good. So good. It was a really good book. And I'm reading the, uh, the sequel to it, The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy, um, which is also good, but for some reason I'm just not in the mental place for it right now. So... Yeah, I don't know. But I did sign up for a free three-month trial of Kindle Unlimited. That's how I'm reading all the Ruby Dixon books, because all of her books are on 
Kindle Unlimited and my library did not have them. They only have the audiobooks and Hoopla, which is the uh, site that they use for the library, only lets you check out four titles at a time and it's for a whole month and it doesn't matter if you return them, you still can only check out four in a month. So I uh, listened to four Ruby Dixon books while I organized my entire office and folded laundry. Made it more enjoyable, but that only took me like a couple of hours to, or I guess, I listened to them over two days. So one weekend and then I had to wait a whole month and I wasn't going to wait that long to hear what happens with all of our couples, all of our blue aliens and their their mates and their kits and their stuff. Um, so yeah, I just went ahead and signed up for Kindle Unlimited. It's been nice because I could read on my phone at night. Um, so usually I read books to the kids and then, or to Joshua, Meg when goes and reads on her own now, but I read a book to Joshua and then he will watch like gamer tutorials. <laughs> um, he falls asleep which doesn't take very long but um he's been doing that like on his tablet and then i'm watching or i'm reading a book on my phone and then i can have all the lights off because before i would be reading like a physical book and i'd have to have the lights on and that kept him awake for longer so it's kind of working out to read on my phone and i can put it in night mode and yeah it's it's good so anyway i'm doing a lot of rambling. I don't think I really have anything else to share. I bought some patterns. Um, I think Meg, who is Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits, is having a pattern sale. So I bought a couple of her bundles. She has a couple Christmas sweater bundles. I think one is fingering weight, one's DK weight. So I bought those um, and she just put out like a crab pattern that I want to make. Um, for Meg or for Joshua, I don't know. Um, so this is the only thing that I've purchased other than this stuff, which the uh, the book covers I actually bought back in February. I just happened to get them in, Ju in July. Uh, yeah, so I will leave it there. Thank you all so much for joining me. I hope that you have a wonderful day and safe um, weekend that uh, yeah you have a good rest of the summer I don't know when a podcast again I'm going to try to get back into it for two every two weeks schedule but I just don't know summer is a little more um, up in the air with the kids being home and stuff so uh, yeah till we talk again I will um, wish you well and see you soon okay bye that little green guy. What is that? Is that a tree? Yeah. Cool. Oh, and a piggy sanctuary. <coughs> oh my. <coughs> oh, they're so cute. <coughs> hey guys. Oh, there's two of them. What's in there? <coughs> <coughs> the raiders that betray my home. Oh my god, don't let him out. Oh, this is at the porch. He can go on to the porch. He's still be sure. <coughs> Oh, and here's my other home. <coughs> here's my gilded shirt. <coughs> here's my food. <coughs> Finally, you get to see my zoo. Oh, and have you seen this yet? Your monolithic structures. <coughs> don't go too far away. I don't want you to lose your piggy.